Who was the first American to eat a tomato? I'm Richard. And I'm Gary. And these are our incredible stories. Hello and welcome back to all of our listeners from around the world and across the United States. We are so happy to have you back with us again for some more incredible stories. If you are listening for the first time, welcome to our show. We hope that you enjoy. We will hope that you push that like and subscribe button. And we hope that you will uh, join us each and every Friday for new and incredible stories. And if you like us enough and you think somebody else you know might enjoy some very exciting stories, go ahead and spread the news. Spread the cheer. Tell them that they can join us, too. There's always room for one more. Yes, we're welcoming uh, all of our listeners from uh, around the world. Uh, and as we speak to you right now, uh, you folks are located in more than 50 different countries around the world. Yes, that's how many people, uh, how many countries we have, over 50. Over 50. Over 50, uh, 50 I think countries it's around listen. 56. And, uh, and not only that, but coast to coast, New York to California and um, Florida on up to uh, as far north as New York. Absolutely. So, and we appreciate each and every single one of you uh, tuning in to listen to our program. It's refreshing to know that there's people out there who enjoy listening and uh, enjoying these uh, stories that we're able to bring each. Oh, and, every and we week. love uh, looking up these stories, uh, searching. Uh, oh, it's fun searching every which way to uh, bring you something that hopefully you've never heard of before and will amaze you. So, Gary, uh, I'm going to start off uh, this evening with a question. Who was the first American to eat a tomato? I have no clue. <laughs> um, do we know who the first American was to eat a hamburger or a pizza? I really, I, I don't, I have no clue. You know what? It's funny. It's, it's not really clear as to when some of these things came to the United States. I think. I feel like they just immigrated into the United States when we had people from other countries coming in because hot dogs and hamburgers really or uh, come from Germany, and uh, and I, I believe that's how it, they got their hamburgers. At least got their name from mm -hmm. Hamburg, Germany. Hamburg, Germany. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and so, anyhow, the point I'm making is. We don't keep track. No, of, of course who, not. We don't keep track of who the first person was to eat something. And so it's very incredible to me that we do know who the first American was to eat a tomato of all things. Oh, not a McDonald's burger or, um, pizza hut pizza, which you would think, well, maybe we could find out who that was. Uh -huh. No, <clears throat> eat a tomato. And, he created a national stir by doing this, Gary. Uh, his name is all but lost in the back pages of America's history books, but thanks to Richard and Gary's incredible skills of research, we have located him. Yes, hours and hours of research. Yes, his name, Robert Gibbon Johnson. Robert Gibbon Johnson the first American to eat a tomato, the first man in the United States to eat a raw tomato and not in his kitchen or dining room, but in public. Now, it took a lot of courage to do that. In fact, the people who were watching him do this in a public square were expecting that he would immediately keel over and die yes yes they did mm -hmm. so robert gibbon johnson goes out into the public square the front steps of the salem county courthouse in new jersey it's a hot august afternoon the year is 1820 he held up a red ruby red tomato large tomato and then he bit into it and ate it, and the startled audience gasped. <gasps> they waited for the brave man to die, but 
he didn't. Up to that day, Gary, tomatoes had been grown in the United States only, believe it or not, as ornamental fruits. You know, you'd put what? Them, yeah, just for the table. Yeah, you'd put them, you know, in wreaths. Uh, uh, back then, they would make wreaths out of different vegetables. Oh my gosh, how would you make a wreath out? Of t- they, they're squishy. Yeah, I know, but uh, they wouldn't, I, I wouldn't think that would last very long. Uh, uh, right, right, but somehow they did. That was a, a skill back then, and. So tomatoes were ornamental fruits. Um, uh, they Actually, they were called love apples, but they were believed to, to be highly poisonous. And you know there's many things that look pretty that you do not eat. That's right. Because they are poisonous. That is true. So I don't know how he finally figured out that this was not true, but he was determined to wipe away this old wives' tale. He had traveled in in South America, Gary, and that's where he first ate a tomato, and he found them delicious, as we do. Um, Now, his uh, courageous gesture was a success. When he didn't die after eating the raw tomato, tomatoes started to become very popular. And today, thanks to Robert Gibbon Johnson, the United States is the greatest tomato-eating country in the world. And, Gary, it takes all kinds of heroes to make a nation, including somebody brave enough to eat a raw tomato. Isn't that something? <laughs> now, I think that may have... Um, the, the reason why it may have been seen as a poisonous plant is because uh, tomatoes are in the family of nightshade plants. Nightshade Nightshade plants, yeah. yes. Uh, they're not the only ones. Mm-hmm. Um, but some nightshade plants are highly toxic. Yeah, and what we don't know all the details, but you have to wonder, what possessed this man to take a chance with his life when he was in South America? That's a long ways from New Jersey. Well, I'm pretty sure if you were in a, a place where the majority of the people are eating tomatoes. That's it. Or plants That's and stuff. It. He must have seen and, some of the folks there eating tomatoes. And none of the people were dead. And survived. Uh-huh. I'm experience. pretty sure that he would have thought that that's okay. But because because it's in that family of nightshade, if you're thinking about people who um, know that the nightshade plant is poisonous uh, and would assume that this other plant, which is in that same family, could also be could have been yeah. highly toxic, and that makes sense. So, uh, thanks to uh, Robert Gibbon Johnson, we enjoy some foods today, and uh, I'm going to see how many you and I can come up with. We'll go back and forth, Gary, and if you uh, uh, falter a little bit, I'll uh, just rattle some off while you're thinking. Um, so, if you'd like to start, uh, name a food. That we have today that is either made out of tomatoes or, uh, you know, requires tomatoes in some way uh, to become the food that we enjoy. I'm going to go with the top one, ketchup. Ketchup, yes. We would not have ketchup today. No ketchup. Had it not been for Robert Gibbon Johnson. Right. That's correct. Uh, in 1820. I'm going to say pizza. Yeah, the, the sauce that's on the pizza. Uh-huh. But, so I would say uh, no spaghetti sauce. No spaghetti sauce, no pasta sauce whatsoever, right? Unless unless uh, you like Alfredo. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say uh, tomato soup. Oh, and there's nothing better than tomato soup with mm-hmm. a grilled cheese sandwich on a rainy day. Right. Um, sun-dried tomatoes for okay. salads and other things. Uh, bacon lettuce tomato sandwich. Ooh, BL. could you imagine? No BLT? Yeah. It would just be BL. <laughs> yeah. And that doesn't sound very appetizing. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> Um, let's see what else. Um, tomato bisque soup. Oh yeah. Tomato bisque. Uh, oh, uh, some of the breads that use, oh, oh no, wait, I'm going to change that. I'm going to change that. Yeah. There's some breads that have, uh, sun-dried tomatoes, but I already said sun-dried tomatoes. I'm going to say salsa. You would okay, have, you would salsa. have no salsa. No salsa. Ooh, Mexican food would not be the same. No, that would affect a great deal. I'm going to say V8 juice and tomato juice. That's right. No Bloody Marys for uh, cocktails. No Bloody Marys for cocktails. No barbecue sauce. Oh, my. Well, is there really tomato and barbecue sauce? I think some. Okay. that's. A, I'll say that maybe. Okay. Um, 
let's see. Uh, shrimp cocktail oh, sauce. Shrimp cocktail sauce, right. Um, Jambalaya. Tomato aspic. Now, for, <laughs> that goes back really far. Uh, grandma used to make aspic. And for those of you who are like, what is he talking about? What is aspic? Mm -hmm. uh, that was jello that was made with all vegetables. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why that's not really around anymore because people don't really like their jello filled with vegetables. Mm -hmm. Kind of like it more with blue raspberry or lime or some other flavor. Having a tomato flavored gelatin is not really the. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's a, that's a good one. I'm going to go with salads, the toss salad or a chef salad. Sure, yep, that would be a big one. Mm -hmm. um, oh, God, I keep going back to sauces, but I mean, you know, like creamy the, tomato soup. Yeah, but that's kind of the same thing as what we were talking about earlier. Let's see what else? What else would stuffed tomatoes? Oh, stuffed tomatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah meatloaf. Meatloaf. Uh, yeah, meatloaf. Yeah, gotta have. How can you do a yeah, meatloaf without tomato? Gotta have that. Fried green tomatoes. Oh, fried green tomatoes. That's delicious. Yeah. Um, yeah. Chili. Chili. Yep. Tomatoes and chili. Tomato paste. Tomato. Pa yep. Wouldn't have tomato paste. Tomato paste is used in a lot of different yeah. things. Stew um, stewed tomatoes. Stewed tomatoes. Yeah. And even, I, I would say in stew, because you may not mm -hmm. use actual tomatoes in stew, but sometimes people use tomato paste, a little bit of tomato paste in stew. Mm -hmm. Um. So let's go with not only stew, but vegetable soup. Vegetable soup, yeah. Um, Seven-layer dip. Oh, seven-layer dip. Uh, you know what? You would have a hard time getting rid of the smell of a skunk because one of the things you have to bathe in mm -hmm. is tomato juice to get rid of that odor yeah. after you've been sprayed by a skunk. People would just walk around smelling until that wore off, so nobody would want to be around with uh, yeah. them. So, I mean... Spanish rice. Whew. Oh, Spanish rice, yeah. Raviolis, oh. raviolios. Well, yeah, but that's that's still that spaghetti sauce. Okay, I right, uh, put that in the pasta fagioli. Again, that still that's still sauce. marinara. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> have you heard of anything like a tomato pie? Tom I was going to say no, but I think I have heard of a tomato pie. Okay, I have heard of tomato pie. Okay, it's yeah, uh, no tomato pie for anybody who eats tomato pie. Forget it. You wouldn't have it. <laughs> if it weren't for this man standing on the steps, putting his life at risk for everybody. Yeah. Pickled, um, pickled tomatoes are also. Pickled tomatoes, yeah. yeah. You wouldn't have that. Fried green tomatoes. <clears throat> you already mentioned that one. Oh, I did. Um, so anyhow, wow. Let's so, just say, a lot right wow. There. And I think as we've been going through this, um, you, you uh, folks who are listening in, probably in your mind, you are coming up with some things too. Maybe some of the things that we um, mentioned and maybe some things that we did not mention. Oh, uh, I'm sure. It's a good exercise in, I wonder about this or that, yeah. if we would have had this or that, if we couldn't eat tomatoes. So tomatoes really are an important part of our lives, I believe. They are. Especially uh, in, in most uh, cuisines, uh, you know, not just uh, American cuisine, but uh, European and, yeah. and Asian cuisines. Oh, uh, to all different types of cuisines. Sure. To, and um, South American. And so tomatoes oh. are, are worldwide. I got another one. We would never have had Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, the movie. <laughs> true, true. Well, I don't know, though. You could have a poisonous tomato. Well, that's true. Killer, no. But it, it wouldn't, the killer tomato it wouldn't be as good if, <laughs> if it were something that you already knew was dangerous versus something that you keep in your refrigerator or on your counter. Mm -hmm. You know, that would have changed the whole movie. Well, Gary, uh, <clears throat> all of this uh, conversation has... Made me thirsty, so I think uh, I'm going to have to wrap things up and go to the refrigerator and pour myself a nice cold glass of tomato juice. All right, you go ahead and enjoy that tomato juice. I'm going to stick with coffee. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, it may not have been uh, an incredible story. It but, is incredible. Uh, <laughs> it is. But I think it's more fascinating than incredible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and a little bit bizarre, too. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's all for now, and until next time, I'm Richard. I'm Gary, and these are our incredible stories. <laughs>